Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Let's have a look at how to customize timeline clip views. Now, Adobe gives you tons of different ways to customize how Premiere Pro looks. So it's up to you to choose what helps you visually. And one of the ways you can change Premiere Pro's uh, previews of the timeline is, is the actual clips themselves, whether they have thumbnails, how many thumbnails. But I'm also gonna show you a, a couple of other uh, little tips in, in previewing this. Uh, and you have to go to two different places for this. Let's have a look. So right now, when I'm zoomed out, it might look like I have a thumbnail for each one of my clips because this is a fairly short clip. But if I zoom in, you'll start to see a thumbnail at the beginning and the clip ends here. So there's only a thumbnail at the beginning of each clip. What you can do, it's not in the wrench menu, it's actually in the little flyout menu here, little three line menu. If you click there, the default is video head thumbnails, meaning it's the head of the clip. You can turn on continuous video thumbnails. So watch what happens. Now I have thumbnails everywhere. And you'll see that they're, they're redrawing as I move through my timeline. So this could slow things down. In fact, that's why it's not turned on by default. It could slow things down because Premiere Pro has to read every one of those clips to build the thumbnail so you can see them. It's up to you. If you need this and you count on it and it's not slowing things down, great, go ahead and use it. There's a third choice in here. That's video head and tail thumbnails. So it kind of looks like the same, but if again, if we zoom in, There's the clip, so you can see a thumbnail at the end, that's the tail and the head. Same thing over here for this clip, the head and tail. Maybe the clip itself is changing over time and this helps you identify from the beginning of the clip to the end of the clip without having to move the playhead over top of it. I don't think this slows things down at all. I would never use it, but you can. So that's in this little fly out here and again, the default is just to put it on the head and I find it very useful. Now, one thing that, that I always do is if I'm trimming and I'm moving my mouse over here, for whatever reason, I tend to grab up in this area here and I always accidentally grab the keyframes. So I turn it off. I turn it on when I need it, and then I turn it off. I leave it for the, the uh, audio uh, clips. I don't know why, but I don't have that problem with audio clips. So in the, the wrench, you can turn off video keyframe. So if I get rid of the check here, now I don't have that, and I'm trimming and not seeing those in there. Now you can create a completely uncluttered view if you want, back in the wrench, you can turn off the thumbnails, you can turn off video names, and even in the audio, you can turn off the audio waveforms and the audio keyframes and the audio, you can actually turn on the audio names, I have them off, but you can have this totally uncluttered view of everything and just have blocks. Um, let me go back and, and turn all of that on. Now with the waveforms, the audio waveforms, back in the little three line flyout menu, you can change the way that they, they look. Uh, the waveforms are rectified and they're logarithmic. So watch the change when I, when I choose this, then they're becoming, you know, like two symmetrical um, waveforms. And if I turn off logarithmic, scaling, then they scale and maybe they are a little harder to see. This is really good. Logarithmic is good for uh, when you're looking at a very quiet boom mic. 
So lots of ways to customize that. The, the other one is Adobe changed this effects badge here. They moved it to the end instead of the head. It's at the tail. And now I'm accidentally gra grabbing this darn thing. So I grab right now. Oh, and then I grab, oh, oh, oh. Oh, and the reason they added this here is because they recently added the, the uh, properties and, and effects controls side by side. And it, it was just an idea to help people get to the effects. Click on it and it opens up the effects. You can change this too. Back in the wrench, show effects badges. When I do that, it's gone. So anywhere I, I click on the edge here, I can trim this out without accidentally hitting any of those. Now, they, there is value in these effects clips. So right now it's gray. So if I do make a change, let's say I change the scale of this. Oops, I'm, yeah, I'm on this one. And I'm changing the scale. You see that it turns white. This one's gray because there is no change. It's at 100%. This one is at 132. So there, there is value in seeing those if you need to, to see if there are changes or not. Now, there's uh, two other um, little indicators in the timeline that are turned off by default. And these do affect performance for very long timelines. If you're working with long form documentaries, films, something that, you know, it's an hour, two hours, if you have these next things turned on, you'll definitely find performance issues, but I'll just show you what they are. One other thing you can do is you can turn on duplicate frames. Right now, I'm gonna duplicate this whole clip and then trim this to the middle. So this clip is really part of that clip, but it's hard to tell. So back in the wrench, you can uh, show duplicate frames and you can see, right there and right there. And the more I increase this, the more it'll increase there. So this is another way to, to display uh, duplicates on the timeline. Now let's look at through edits. So this clip here has no missing frames, but if I cut this, it looks the same, it's not missing any frames, but it looks like a separate clip. It's like, that's a clip, that's a clip. How do I know that that clip is really the tail of this? So if I delete that and drag that out, it's the same clip. And this was added to help editors know when they didn't need to have a cut there. For whatever reason, a cut was added and maybe something was slipping and sliding and now you don't need the cut. How do I know if I don't need the cut or not? Well, you can go back to here and show through edits. It's off by default. Watch what happens right here. You get this little bow tie that shows up and that's telling you that the end of this clip, the last frame of this clip and the first frame of this clip are all matching they don't they don't miss anything so if you right click in the in the edit see how it's it's selecting the edit you can join a through edit oh look and i have a through edit down here i didn't even know i had wow when i zoomed out join that through edit join that oh wow so it's useful for me too now adobe added that uh uh, show through edits because it was a Final Cut, the old Final Cut uh, feature that editors wanted that moved from Final Cut to Premiere Pro. And it's been part of Premiere Pro for many years. So you can use that to help you find through edits uh, that you didn't need, like you saw that I didn't even know that I left that one in there. And it can be very helpful uh, if you're trying to uh, housekeep your, your timeline and get rid of extraneous edits that don't need to be there. So. A few ways that you can work with uh, how things are displayed in, in Premiere Pro. Again, one of the most powerful parts of Premiere Pro is its customization. And one of the most confusing parts of Premiere Pro is its customization. Adobe gives you lots of ways to customize it, but you have to kind of remember the kind of things that you've done uh, when you're customizing. Hey, if you're new to Video Revealed and you have found this informative, take a moment and subscribe. If you want to support us some more, you can do that at videorevealed.com slash shop. Donate once or monthly, any amount. We appreciate all of our wonderful donors. Till next time, it's my job 
to uh, have a look at some of the things that I hear from other people, because this came from a conversation I had with someone who asked about a specific tutorial they saw, and they said, how did you change your thumbnail? So that's what I do. I listen to, to these questions and then I turn them into, hopefully, useful tutorials for you.